DWP crackdown could see millions of people lose benefit payments. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to UK Times, where we delve into the latest developments shaping the welfare landscape across the UK. Today, we're confronting a sobering reality, a DWP crackdown that could potentially strip millions of people of their benefit payments. As the Department for Work and Pensions tightens its grip on benefit eligibility, many individuals and families are facing the stark possibility of losing vital financial support. This crackdown is sending shockwaves through communities, leaving many vulnerable individuals at risk of falling into hardship. Indeed, the implications are profound, as countless lives hang in the balance. So, who exactly is at risk of losing their benefit payments, and what steps can be taken to mitigate the impact? Stay tuned as we navigate the complexities of this crackdown, shed light on its consequences, and provide valuable insights to those affected. And before we continue, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement empowers us to continue advocating for those in need. Let's stand together in solidarity and ensure that no one falls through the cracks. You're watching UK Times. Let's confront this challenge head on. A new crackdown on benefits claimants is expected to be announced later today by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, amid a post-pandemic rise in people being declared unfit to work that saw the NHS issue 11 million sick notes in 2023. There has been an increase of one-third in the number of people described as economically inactive due to long-term sickness since the pandemic, with 2.8 million people in Britain now out of work due to ill health. The Prime Minister's plan to tackle this rise in economic inactivity is to reform what he calls sick note culture. The government has expressed concerns that the fit note system has opened the floodgates for millions of people to be declared not fit to work by their GP and so, as part of their reforms, will consider removing GPs from the equation entirely. As part of the reforms, specialist work and health professionals could instead issue sick notes alongside an objective assessment of whether someone is fit to work. Before these measures are put in place, Rishi Sunak's government will hold a call for evidence from healthcare professionals and employers to find out how to support people with health conditions to start work. In a speech later today, the Prime Minister is expected to say, we don't just need to change the sick note, we need to change the sick note culture so the default becomes what work you can do not what you can't. Building on the pilots we've already started we're going to design a new system where people have easy and rapid access to specialized work and health support to help them back to work from the very first fitnote conversation. We're also going to test shifting the responsibility for assessment from GPs and giving it to specialist work and health professionals who have the dedicated time to provide an objective assessment of someone's ability to work and the tailored support they need to do so. This sharp rise in long-term sickness has also seen a sharp rise in Department for Work and Pension Spending as more people claim disability and sickness benefits. Since the pandemic, taxpayer spending on these benefits has risen by two-thirds, from £42.30 billion to £69 billion. The government says that the fit note process has become the first step to someone falling out of work, with evidence showing that the longer someone is out of work, the harder it is to get back into it. Of the 2.8 million people declared unfit to work last year, a survey found that 53% experienced depression, bad nerves, or anxiety. The Prime Minister is also expected to say in his planned speech, we should see it as a sign of progress that people can talk openly about mental health conditions in a way that only a few years ago would have been unthinkable, and I will never dismiss or downplay the illnesses people have. But just as it would be wrong to dismiss this growing trend, so it would be wrong merely to sit back and accept it because it's too hard, or too controversial, or for fear of causing offence, doing so, would let down many of the people our welfare system was designed to help. Because if you believe as I do, that work gives you the chance not just to earn but to contribute, to belong, to overcome feelings of loneliness and social isolation and if you believe, as I do, the growing body of evidence that good work can actually improve mental and physical health, then it becomes clear. We need to be more ambitious about helping people back to work and more honest about the risk of over-medicalizing the everyday challenges and worries of life. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this video will be helpful for you. Please subscribe our channel for more interesting videos. And please don't forget like, share and comment.